Hey guys, it's Ollie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be going over kind of a touchy subject, but one that is asked about a ton and one that was actually requested to me directly from my channel. So the question for me actually directly talked about Pac-Man frogs and I will in this video talk about what I give my amphibians. Today we're going to talk about how to get your pets vitamins and minerals and what supplements you should be providing. I know this is a very intimidating thing to learn about whenever I started keeping. Um, it's just a lot of information that can be really confusing and really intimidating, but it's not that bad. After you get the hang of it, it's really, it's not that bad. I promise you it's not as bad as it sounds. So I don't really have any reptiles that really need supplements. I don't have any lizards and snakes don't really need extra calcium or vitamins unless it's producing eggs then they need some more calcium but so my experience is more with amphibians but i have just general overall information on this list so as always disclaimer i am not by any means an expert at all always make sure you're going to more than one source more than two sources go to as many sources as you can get to research these things on your own don't just take my word don't just take someone else's word because we're all humans and we all make mistakes and it, it happens. So I'm just talking from my own personal experiences and from what I have learned while keeping these animals. So again, not an expert, just a keeper that's trying to help other keepers. Starting out, there are five main types of vitamins you can give to your reptiles or amphibians. So the first one being vitamin E, and this acts as like an antioxidant and helps with the immune system. Then we have B1, which um, is also known as thiamine. This helps with the nervous system, so if you don't have this, it can cause neurological disorders like seizures. Then we have vitamin A, which I talk about a little bit more in this video. This helps with eye and skin health. Um, it's very important for amphibians. I'll get more on that later. And probably the biggest two that you're probably going to hear about a ton, which is calcium. And calcium, of course, helps with bone and shell health and growth, um, as well as helping um, produce eggs. So calcium is super, super important for reptiles and amphibians. Then alongside with calcium, you also want D3. So D3 metabolizes the calcium. So if you give calcium and they have no way of getting D3, it defeats the whole point of giving them calcium. So without D3 and without calcium, they probably will develop metabolic bone disease, which is an umbrella term for a series of um, deformities that are just super devastating and most animals don't live through that. So it's very, very, very important to make sure they're getting the correct things in their diet. All of these can be very harmful if you don't have them, but also know that these things can cause toxicity if given too much. So it's very, very important that you research your specific animal and how much they should have of each of these items and you know, talk to other keepers that keep them, that's the easiest way to do it. And figure out the correct way because you don't want them to have too much, but they still need it in their diet. So, so in the wild, um, these animals would get their D3 from the sun and they would get their calcium and other vitamins and minerals from their diet. You know, they eat all kinds of bugs or leafy greens or whatever, and that's how they get all of these vitamins and minerals. Now, of course, in captivity, that's not exactly how it works. We have to, kind of jump through some hoops to make sure that they get what they need. So for D3, there's a couple ways you can do it. For D3, um, you can provide a UVB bulb, which is a light fixture that um, kind of imitates the sun. So if you have a basking animal, they would probably use this a lot more. This is the more preferred method, like a bearded dragon perhaps. Um, and you put it up there, you hook it up, you do have to change the bulb every six to eight months. Even if it's still on, the UVB won't be as strong. Now for animals that don't really bask, um, you still might want to provide a different supplement to help with the D3, even if they have UV, UVB lighting. Again, do some research on your own animal and you should be able to figure all of it out. Okay, so how else can you get the other vitamins and minerals that are needed to your animal? 
as well as D3 if you don't have a UVB light or you have an animal that doesn't necessarily bask in UVB light. Well, what most people use are powder supplements. So you get these little things and they come in these. This is what I use for one of the things I use. And it's just this powder, just, just powder. So you have different brands of what you can use for your powdered supplements. Most of these will include um, calcium with D3, calcium without D3, and a multivitamin that has all your other vitamins like E and A and whatnot. You also have some that are specifically A, but I'm sure there's some out there that are specifically E. I'm not really sure. I don't really have to worry about that one, but I'm sure it exists, maybe. So some popular brands include Zoomed. They have a couple different items. Um, you can also get Reptical. That's a really popular one, one of the older ones as well. You can also get one that's a little bit uh, more not known, but I know some YouTubers that use it, and it's Sticky Tongue Farms. I don't use any of these personally. I never really have. I never had to worry about it, but um, they can definitely be something that you could look into. So those are some options. I use Rapashi. So I use Rapashi Calcium Plus for most of my dustings. So this has the calcium, D3, and your other minerals. I also have Rapashi uh, Vitamin A because amphibians need a little bit more vitamin A, at least my toads and my frog do. I think most of them do. So just for some examples and also kind of answering that question that was asked on my YouTube by, I believe your name was Elsie Armstrong. My Pac-Man frog, um, he gets this. He gets this at least two times a month, and then he gets his vitamin uh, A at least once a month. Um, don't do any more than twice though. Vitamin A, you don't do any more than twice for amphibians is what I've heard. But yeah, so just that there's your answer. Sorry, it was kind of notebooked in the middle of this. No, thank you for your question. It definitely helped make this video, so thank you. My toes are the same way, by the way. Um, they also get the Rapashi Calcium Plus, and they also get the Rapashi uh, Vitamin A. Same schedule, at least at least twice a month for this, and um, one to two times a month for Vitamin A. So, those are the only examples I have because those are the only things that I have that eat um, any of the powdered stuff. So. So also the the powders do um, expire after six months of opening. Even if the expiration date says otherwise, you should always replace these after six months. They don't like like go like sour or something. They just kind of lose their potency. So just to make sure they're getting what they need, every six months replace these. So okay. So the last thing I really want to touch on for this video is uh, gut loading. So gut loading is when you take um, certain fruits or veggies that are really, really healthy and really, really rich in vitamins and minerals and you give it to your feeder uh, colony like 24 hours before you feed. So you can get just different vegetables most keepers do. So like for example, um, if you wanted more vitamin A in your feeder insects, like carrots are a good example of that. If you wanted more vitamin E, then some dark leafy greens, um, like colored greens would be great to feed your feeders. Just remember whatever goes in your feeders goes in your pet. They also make these um, high calcium bug diets. So since I feed more roaches, I have the roach diet. They have some for crickets and I'm sure whatever else you feed as well. But this is what I use, and it's just high calcium, so, um, yeah, it's pretty good. I also do give my feeders uh, veggies as well, but, yeah, I just started kind of using this, and it's, it's pretty good. I know they also make bug burger, which I'm going to get soon, and I'll let you guys know how that works for me. I really hope that helped. Again, this can be a really confusing, controversial, intimidating subject. And I explained the best I could. So yeah, that's really all the information I have to offer you today. Um, I get a lot of my information from my amphibians from Facebook groups, just because it's a large amount of people giving their opinion. 
and they have archives and things like that of what works best for everybody. But yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to follow me over on Instagram. I post pictures of my pets every single day, as well as questions and different things for you guys to interact with on my stories. So yeah, don't forget to go over there and follow me if you're into that kind of thing. And if you like this kind of content, which I hope you do, um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I upload every single Friday at 3 p.m. And thank you so much for being here today. It really does mean a lot to me. And uh, as always, I will see you next week. Bye.